And how long do you reckon this will go for? Uh, about an hour. Okay, cool. Perfect. Right, uh, uh-huh. today we have a very special guest, so how about you introduce yourself? G'day everyone, uh, I'm Steve Bastoni, I'm an actor, a festival director and father and surfer. <laughs> So a variety of things right of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a conversation starter. <laughs> um, so I think you're most known for being um, in The Matrix or The Matrix 2. So uh, yeah. yeah, tell us a bit about how you got into that. Yeah, Matrix 2 was a, was a good one. Um, I, I was in Sydney at the time. Uh, I think it was 1999. Um or it could have been 2000, actually. I think it was 99, anyway. Um, and I hadn't worked for about three months, and I was starting to get a bit itchy. And I got this audition for some film. Well, I knew what The Matrix 1 was because it had been a huge success. So I was pretty excited to be uh, asked to audition for 2. But I forgot about the audition. I was out on the town with some mates, and <laughs> I, um, I went to a nightclub called the Cuba which is nice. notorious, you know, notorious for sort of you know, going, well, it finishes about 8 a.m. So I think I got, I went straight from the Cuba to the audition, um, having ingested various things and uh, arrived there. <laughs> I arrived there uh, sort of in a state of uh, elevated uh, ecstasy, you might say. And, uh, <laughs> and so it was funny because I walked out of there thinking, well, I fucked that up. And I didn't hear anything for about, two months and uh, after that they rang up and said we want to offer you the role of Captain Soren so it was pretty cool it was one of those lucky things and um, and obviously I got to go to America we shot the first 12 weeks well when I say shot I use that term loosely I was I was employed for 12 weeks and we were at Alameda in, in Oakland in uh, San Francisco but we were all basically on standby because it was such a big project. They didn't know what they were going to shoot. Man, the schedule was a bit all over the place. So um, they just wanted us all there in case they wanted to shoot, particularly the big Zion party stuff in the cave, in the big cave, which was actually all in, done in a studio. And it was all done where they shoot Mythbusters in Alameda, which is in Oakland in in, um, in, in uh, San Francisco, near San Francisco. So we were all there and 12 weeks I'm hanging around there and I literally filmed one day out of that 12 weeks. So the rest of the time we were just, you know, we got really good at pool and drank a lot. Um, and that's about <laughs> it. But, and, uh, and then, yeah, and then we came back to Sydney and then, and then we shot a bit at Fox Studios and, uh, you know, I got a chance to show the boys like uh, Lawrence Fishburne and I became pretty close and Keanu, we took Keanu out a few nights where... Uh, you probably can't remember, but um, <laughs> no, that, yeah, that sounds had, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah we, we had, took uh, Keanu Reeves up for a few nights. That was great. Yeah, yeah, Keanu was uh, he was good. He was he was a really nice guy actually. Keanu, he's a lovely bloke. But mm-hmm. you know, Fishburne and I really got along well, and um, we hung out. And he had a black Vespa, which uh, at the time I didn't have a license, so I was on the back of his Vespa. I was his bitch on the back of the Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we got... Um, I can see what you're Googling in real time. It's pretty cool. A Vespa is a... Is Are you sure a, you were in the back of that thing? <laughs> a Vespa is a small Italian scooter. <laughs> you know what a Vespa is, Thomas. Come on Thomas. with it. Oh, my God. Vespa, Vespa with an A. There you there go. We go. <laughs> and, and Vespa is it's like it's 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 probably the least macho motorcycle you could ever ride. It's like it's kind of in Vespa literally in Italian means mosquito. So um you know it's the opposite of a Harley. Hmm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was fun. We had a lot of fun and um yeah, came out all right. I think it was the second highest grossing film of all time. So Good to be involved in. Not too bad, so. Not too bad at all, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's a that's a good one for the CV. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been a bit of a door opener at times. So it was good fun, and uh, I, I don't really keep in contact with Keanu or, or uh, Lawrence Fishburne anymore. They've sort of um, 
I don't know. I really don't have, haven't kept in contact with them. I do keep in contact with the Raymond brothers, the two albino twins, who the kung fu experts. Who they, I think they became like ghosts. You know, like, they were like these dreadlock, uh, dreadlocked white ghosts, and uh, they were awesome. They, these pair of twins, they they cast them out of the UK, and uh, these boys were kick ass black belt. Neil and Adrian Raymond. Yeah, they. Uh, Raymond, M A N T, Raymond. Raymond. And yeah, they were uh, um, they were amazing. Um, sorry, I've, I've right messed here. up the spelling again, man. Your spelling <laughs> is oh, no, oh, man, it's Beautiful. terrible. Jesus. Sorry, Thomas, you 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 dropped. I don't know, man. R A R A Y M A N T. M A N T. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, there they are, Adrian oh, Raymond yeah. and Neil Raymond. So they in the Matrix. Um, you'll see if you if you just um, yeah hit on uh, Neil Adrian or Neil, you'll see that um, you'll see them uh, their 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 publicity shots as as the uh, there they are the, the the twins with the dreadlocks. So they, they, they had great characters. They actually got action figures, which I was really jealous of. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Yeah, we got I got um, I got three D like the cyber scan, which you know you have to go into this like sort of cocoon where they they cyber scan you all, and you get this three D image. So they they've got all the information to print my character in three D model, but they they never did. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I might have to be happy with a, a bobblehead or something. <laughs> you should um, you should request it from them so you can 3D print it into your yeah, own no, they, probably, they probably wouldn't even remember my name. They'd probably go, who? <laughs> <laughs> the Wachowski, Wachowski brothers, who are now the Wachowski sisters, would probably uh, tell me to fuck off. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they haven't contacted you at all about the next one, have they? No, my character got blown up, so there's a little chance. <laughs> 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 oh, come on, flashback scenes. Uh, like, there's, there's always something. Oh, Neo, Neo died, so yeah, you never know. But I'm um, still waiting for the call. Maybe they've got the wrong number. I don't know. I haven't changed it in probably 20 <laughs> years. But uh, <laughs> you know, maybe it's bad reception where I live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what do you, what do you think of them moving ahead with another Matrix movie like so far after the last one? Yeah, it's been, it's been a I, long time. What do I think of what? Sorry. Uh, like the which house is moving ahead with another Matrix movie, even though it's been like a good few years since the last one. Uh look, I I understand why they're doing it, but um, you know, in terms of creatively, I would just say just leave it alone and and let it have its legacy, but. It's good for me because I'll I'll probably get more residuals, um, you know, because they'll release yeah. they'll release Matrix Four and um, and you know people who haven't seen it like the younger generation will probably go oh we've got to see one two and three now, so yeah. that'll keep, keep the checks coming in which is good. <laughs> um, <laughs> creative, creatively, I, I I don't think it's a you know look I understand why they're doing it's such a hugely successful franchise why wouldn't you do go again yeah. but. Um, and you know it might be. I'm, I'm sure it'll be really good. Um, I just think you know it has been a long time, and I don't know. I don't know. I would have. I would leave it alone. Well, I probably wouldn't leave it alone if I was the director and they said, "Hey, you want to do four? We're going to give you a hundred million dollars." I'd probably say, "Yeah, okay, I'll have a crack." <laughs> you know? no um, planes, man. Yeah, that's right. So, so I think and, part you know, of it is because of the uh, the current Keanu fever. Yeah, people yeah, love this guy. Everyone wants Keanu. Yeah, Keanu's had this massive resurgence, as uh, and you know his John Wick success has been massive, and um, you know it couldn't happen to a nicer guy, to be honest. Uh, he's yeah. such a sweet guy. Uh, he's Everyone had says so that about him. Anyone who oh, watches him says so, that. Yeah, he's had so much. He's a very humble, dude. He's had so much happen to him in life. He's had a lot of trauma and stuff. So he's quite a gentle soul, and um, he's just nothing like. You know, Neo, he's not a gung-ho, kick-ass kind of guy at all. He's really quite quiet and shy and uh, very humble. Um, and he's a sweet guy. Um, 
Yeah, we, we, we did have a couple of big nights out in Sydney, though, where I, I literally um, had to drag him out of a strip club at 7 in the morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my. the funniest, yeah, he, I won't go into it too much because he's such a lovely bloke, but it was a, it was, it's been funny, you know, we had, <clears throat> we had some fun times. The mud on the beer, was he? <laughs> no? Was he a bit mud on the beer? Mud in the sense. No, he didn't like beer. He was a red wine drinker. He liked red wine. So, oh. but you know, after after um, you know after three a.m. in a strip club, it's pretty much whatever you put in front of him. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. And, uh, we weren't too. We weren't incredibly discerning about our uh, beverages at that t- hour of the morning, as long as it like it had a high alcohol content. We were. <laughs> We're into it. <laughs> I think that has to be some kind of life achievement going to a fucking strip club with Keanu Reeves, yeah, man. I mean, yeah. That's yeah. the shit you put on your fucking gravestone, you know? Well, no, no. Dragging him out of there was, was the achievement. <laughs> <laughs> getting, him in there was, getting him in there was easy. He's fair play. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. It's just, yeah, that's it's so just unbelievable. Oh. Um, <laughs> speaking of your experience on The Matrix, uh, you did this other uh, show where you got interviewed and they brought up something about a Will Smith story. Oh, yeah. Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So um, was, we, we were filming in, um, this was in Alameda. So in San Francisco there in Oakland. And um, I keep saying San Francisco. It's near San Francisco. It's actually Oakland. But um, so Will was married to, and still is married to Jada Pinkett Smith, who played one of the characters in, um, and Jada Pinkett Smith played one of the characters in, in Matrix 3, and 2 and 3. Um, she, now, her character was called, <coughs> I can't remember what it was called. Anyway, um, so he was on set hanging out quite a bit. Um, he came to visit with the kids and stuff, and um, the Raymond brothers and I and Will played a game of two on two in basketball, right? And yeah. and it was me and uh, uh, me and Neil against Adrian and Will, and because um, because Adrian and Neil are identical twins, one can assume that they have exactly the same level of skill in basketball. So therefore, I deduce from that that I beat Will Smith in one-on-one <laughs> because because they're identical twins they cancel each other out because they've got the, they're exactly the same right so same skill level so basically I beat Will Smith in one-on-one in basketball oh wow that's, that's yeah. my story and that's what I'm sticking to. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I think you, you have a fair few stories there now. Uh, Beating Will Smith at basketball, trying to drag Keanu Reeves out of a strip club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and it's all true. It's all true, <laughs> except for the one-on-one bit, you know. But we did beat them. We did, we did, we did beat them. So that's um, you know, Neil. Neil and I were victorious over Will and uh, Adrian. And Adrian's probably the better kung fu master. Like Adrian, I think was you know was like a UK. Um, national champion uh, in kung fu, so they're they're pretty uh, pretty full on guys. Like you could stand next to him and he could like flick you on the ear with his foot really quickly, and you <laughs> you wouldn't even know what happened. You know. Well, that's a, that's a yeah, completely completely good explanation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in the last fifteen minutes, we've heard you drag the counter reeves over strip club and. School the Fresh Prince of Bel Air in a game of fucking basketball, man. Yeah. They talk about fucking legends. You're you're a living one. Well done. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Uh, well, we're, not, we, we're not even fifteen minutes into the podcast, <laughs> and we we already have those two. It's it's uh it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, and it's it's a it's a good life, mate. It's a good life. But um, you know, I um. You know, this morning, for instance, I made breakfast for three ungrateful children under 12, uh, packed their school <laughs> bags dro- and dropped them at school and uh, and then vacuumed my house. So it's not all glamour and glitz, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, of course. 
<laughs> so that goes on. Your basin. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, do you think that you're going to tell your kids these stories as well, or are you going to keep that for yourself? I'll, when they're when my eldest son, uh, when he's a bit older, I'll probably yeah, they'll, I'll I'll share stories with them, of course, you know, and I'll probably uh, <laughs> embellish, embellish them a bit and tell them that uh, you know that it wasn't Mick Fanning who fought off that shark in South Africa; it was actually me. Uh, <laughs> that that you know, I've already the little one on his fourth birthday. I did convince him that I was Batman. Uh, <laughs> I think he, they probably know that that's not true by now, but. Yeah, I'll come up with some other stuff for them that'll uh, keep them in awe of their papa. <laughs> oh, you have to. You have to feed them stories so that they you have to tire of you. Otherwise, they just go, well, you're just a fucking boring old bald bastard. Why should I listen to you? <laughs> you know? Well, I'll have you know, son. I fought They'll strippers have off fucking John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled John Wick off of strippers. That's right. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> shooting threes on, on Will Smith. I, 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 I schooled his ass big time. And uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. And if we ever have Will Smith and Keanu Reeves on the podcast, we'll definitely ask them. We'll hear their side of the story. <laughs> you can't. They'll, they'll probably. Well, Will Smith won't be able to deny it because there was two other witnesses. So the Raymond brothers, the Raymond <laughs> brothers, on, collaborate my story. Uh, as for the strippers, there's probably a broken down stripper somewhere in Sydney who's who who's um, you know whose life achievement was private dancing for for uh, John Wick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, it would be, and and yeah, I mean, fuck, it would be mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah, um, and you know, you know, you, you, some sometimes you see those celebrities and you go, fucking two hundred million dollars, they get paid for that kind of movie. I mean, you know, the thing is about Keanu, not many people know this, but he was probably about the fourth choice to play uh, Neo. His career was in a bit of a nosedive after um, after uh, Speed. You know, the success of the Speed movie, they thought everyone, was, you know, he was going to go off. And then he made about three turkeys in a row and everyone was saying, well, he's out. Um, you know, uh, he's finished. And and then he, they offered it to Johnny Depp. They offered it to Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, uh, a whole bunch of other actors. And Could they you all imagine said, no. Tom Cruise? <laughs> As Neo. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then and Keanu said heard about the script and said look I'll audition for it I will audition for it which was unheard of for an A-list actor to audition for a film like a small studio and it, at that time it was a small studio film it was only 30 million dollar budget or something um, and you know um, he auditioned for it and they they said yeah okay and they didn't have you know his fee and he said look don't worry just pay me a small fee and I'll take a percentage of the gross Right now, that percentage that he took uh, is probably made him the highest paid actor in Hollywood. <laughs> so you know, and you know, he's not he's not one of these wankers who you know buys villas, waterfront villas in Italy or anything. He's he's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It'd be great to have a waterfront villa in Italy, but he's 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 uh, he's quite a philanthropist and does a lot of stuff you know on the quiet that not many he doesn't tell people about. But he's a uh, He's a pretty special bloke. Like, you know, this entire stunt team of in Sydney, he was given um, was given a Harley Davidson each by him. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, he's a pretty amazing guy. Yeah, um, he has done some crazy things now. Yeah, he's done some crazy selfless. things. He's a bit of an eccentric for sure. He's a... He's... <laughs> and then you, you, people have still found him, like, he's taken the subway, like... Like a normal oh guy. yeah, there's videos everywhere of yeah. like him letting a letting a woman sit down on the subway and everything, just standing and someone was just like, "Is that Keanu Reeves?" And I'm like, "Nah." Like these are these are things like normal people do, but yeah. uh, the, the fact like he's an a list actor just makes everyone like, "What? He's acting like I act. He's acting like the rest of us." Well, that's right. so weird. Well, that's the thing is that people, you know, like. Russell Crowe's a mate of mine, and you know, like Russell, we can't, you know, we 
I, I could say, Let, Russ, let's go out and have a coffee somewhere. Um, and he can do it in a small country town, but he can't, he can't go out in the city and have a coffee, you know, just randomly and just go down the shop and get a sandwich or whatever, you know, like he, you know, he, uh, he's recognized everywhere he goes and people, you know, whereas, you know, Keanu just is so low key that he can walk around pretty much anywhere and he does. I mean, now probably not so much anymore, but. You know, when we were doing Matrix, he, you know, we'd go out in Sydney to, you know, all over the place, and not many people would recognise him because of just the way he carries himself. He's just like so, uh, <laughs> flies under the radar, you know. Yeah. Uh, do you often get recognised in public? Because you've done a, you've done a lot of stuff. It's funny, you know, because where I live in is sort of like a, a coastal town, a regional coastal town on the outskirts of Melbourne. It's about an hour and a half out of the capital city. So it's down the coast, and so most people don't really give a shit about me here. They sort of they just go, "Oh yeah." <laughs> when I first moved down here, it was like, "Oh, there's that guy," you know, "There's that guy uh, out of Neighbours," or whatever. They all recognise me from Neighbours. Mm -hmm. um, but um, and now it's just like, "Oh yeah, him. He's part of the furniture." And, and <laughs> but but when I go into the city, and I forget, you know, because I don't get recognised so much down here. People don't bat an eyelid, but and I forget. And when I go out in the city. To a you know to a shopping center or something, I do get recognised and people. I don't notice it, but people around me and my kids notice. They go, "Geez, people are really you know." Some people stare at you, Dad, and I'm like, "Yeah, okay." I don't even notice it anymore, really. <laughs> it, it, it have, kind, of, kind I, of a cool feeling. Well, I don't, don't you know? I don't. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I used to get off on it, you know, when I was younger, but um, I, I sort of prefer just you know blending in you know these days it's it's kind of nice when you when, when you know when you're at a restaurant or something and they give you the best table that's nice that's cool you know <laughs> that sounds all right. and, and when you get when you get treated a bit special you kind of go yeah i'm a bit special fuck i'm a little bit special you know um <laughs> but, but but it's not it's not real you know like and it's 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 kind of weird how people put celebrities on a pedestal. I reckon it's kind of weird, you know, like they don't have to, and you know, they don't have to answer to life's problems like normal people do. You know, like for instance, you know, if you're out on the town and you run out of money, that's it. Your night's over, right? You go home, right? Yeah. If you're a celebrity, you just walk into a bar and people want to buy you drinks all night, you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> And I remember going the first time I, I took fish burn out, you know, I had about, I burned through about 300 bucks in drinks in, you know, a couple of hours. And, and, um, at a certain point I said, fish, it's your shout, mate, go to the bar. And he goes, he goes, oh, oh, um, and so he orders the drinks, right? We order the drink. Well, I think I ordered the drinks and I said, your shout fish. And he sort of went, oh, oh, okay. And he pulled out a wad of hundred dollar bills. <laughs> that was just, just, and he didn't know what to do with it. It was like there was this foreign kind of kryptonite or something in his hand. He's like, he just didn't know. He was going, oh, well, like one of these? One of, is it how much? You know, he just didn't know what to do with money because he's not used to buying drinks. You know, he's not mm. used to paying for shit. And it was probably <laughs> because people just buy stuff for, you know, celebrities, you know? Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it was pretty funny. Geez, that's a handy complaint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got all this money. I have no idea what to do with it. People keep buying things. From me. That's right. That's right. Is it how many of these do I give the guy? You know, it's like, <laughs> um, oh, you can give a couple to me, and uh, I'll give them to him on your behalf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it must have been very weird for you to see them yeah. Boat and John Wick kind of bouncing off each other again. That must have been cool. Because like, yeah. Well, Fishburn, Fishburn was like uh, everyone's kind of older brother. He was, uh, he's a really cool guy. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he, him and, and Keanu, Fishburn called him Kiki. And uh, him and, him and Kiki were really tight, you know. <laughs> uh, you can, you can definitely tell it in the films, like, because they, they do have, like, great chemistry. Yeah, yeah. On screen. Yeah, they've yeah. got a, a, a deeper friendship than just on screen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It shows yeah, there's, like, there's a lot of actors to have something like that. 
Oh, yeah. Um, you hardly have that or something like that with an actor, do you? Sorry? I said, do you, you don't have a relationship like that with another actor, do you? Um, well, you know, look, I've, I've known Russell Crowe for, like, since 87. So uh, we got, we've got a bit of a history. So, you know, on, on, on film, we did a movie together called The Water Diviner. And, uh, yeah, we had, we've got, you know, we had a bit of fun on that. That's pretty cool. So that's cool. Actually yeah, really cool, yeah. Friends with Russell Crowe, man. You're friends with the dude, you know, <laughs> 300, man, you know? He's your friends with everybody. Yeah. Well, you know, it's awesome. good to be friends with people. <laughs> <laughs> that's a vibe. Yeah. Especially um, Russell Crowe. You you also had a bit of experience in um, Hawaii Five O apparently. How was yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, uh, Did they film uh, it in yeah. Hawaii? Yeah, we we filmed it in Hawaii in Waikiki, uh, Waikiki and um, I got to fly over there for that. Uh, I only did two episodes. It was only a small role, but my friend Peter Linkov is um, Peter Linkov was the executive producer, and we worked together. In, in Queensland years and years ago, like 20 years ago, on a, on a movie called, um, oh, it was a terrible film, but it was called um, <laughs> uh, Jekyll and Hyde at the time, and then it got changed to The Year of the Tiger. It was with Adam Baldwin. Um, the Year of the Tiger was uh, was filmed, but Francis Ford Coppola was one of the co-producers on it. Uh, and... Um, yeah, if you if you Google the year of the tiger, Adam Baldwin, it might come up. There it is. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, apparently it was big in Spain. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, fair, that's fair enough. <laughs> uh, it's not even coming up, is it? No. <laughs> Adam Baldwin. Adam Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Prophecy of the Tiger. Prophecy of the Tiger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I met uh, Peter Linkov was the writer and um, on and the exec producer on that, and it was going to be uh, it was going to be a big series, but it never got picked up. And so we sort of maintained a friendship uh, over the years, and then he went on to you know, be the, the golden boy at CBS Studios and he's, you know, the executive, he's the big boss on Hawaii Five-0, the big boss on MacGyver, Magnum PI and all these other shows that he's, you know, he's just like the golden boy. They love him um, at CBS. So, yeah, he I, I rang him up and I said, well, fucking get me a gig on Hawaii Five-0, will you? <laughs> and he said, he said, oh, yeah, okay, I'll find something for you. So he got me a little role in it and it was pretty, pretty cool. I got to fly out there and spend spend a week hanging out with him doing a bit of surfing and a little bit of filming it was fun as i expressed it pretty cool <laughs> get me in the yeah. show okay yeah <laughs> That's like... is, there, is there any roles that you've been offered that um have gone to other people and you've just been like ah shit i should have done that yeah yeah um the role of negan in the walking dead Oh what? no way! Yeah. Oh my god, that would be perfect you are for you. Kidding? Yeah, I know. Look, I'm, I, I fucking walked out of that audition. I was at Sony Studios in Los Angeles, and there was me, uh, the guy who got it, and um, and maybe one other guy. Yeah, that fucker. Um, <laughs> and anyway, and he's he's not a great actor. This guy, you know, like he's okay, but he's not fucking great. And. We did. We I did the screen test, and I walked out thinking, "Yeah, I really nailed that. I'm mm -hmm. gonna get this." And um, and uh, I didn't get it. So he got it. Uh, the scene I got, I, I auditioned was a scene with the baseball bat. See, how he's holding that baseball bat, and he has yeah. them all lined up, and he and he starts threatening them all. That was the audition yeah. scene. So yeah, so, that would have been scene. a nice role, man. That would have been a complete game changer. You'll be happy to know I stopped watching seeing The Walking the Dead. After that yeah. exact episode. Oh, really? I did. The album was actually the same. I stopped I don't watching. Know, I don't know what it was. It just, I kind of just thought it's dragging on too long. They're going to keep introducing bodies like, you know, the governor, Negan. And I was just, it's, it's getting dull. And the, the Walking Dead, it's gone on for years. It needs to end, you know? 
Yeah, yeah well, I, I've never watched it, to be honest. Have you, fair enough. <laughs> I, I literally, yeah, I was just about to ask you, have you avoided it for the sole purpose of not getting the role? Or is it just yeah, look, not interested? it's funny because, um, you know, that's kind of bitter and petty, but that pretty much sums me up. Um, <laughs> you know, if, if, I, if I don't get a role... I can't fucking watch it. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> if I go for a gig, I'm not the kind of guy who sits there and goes, oh, geez, I wonder what he did with that role. I'm, I, I sit there going, if I fucking see that guy do that scene, I'm going to break the team. <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, it's I'm not that spiritually evolved that I could say, uh, oh, God bless that guy. I hope he really goes well in life. No, that's not me. I'm like... Fuck you, man. I hope you never work again. Um, <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, you know? Yeah, well, like if, I, I suppose if I was to put myself in that situation, it'd be the exact same. No, it's, like, it's, it's hard. Definitely. It's acting's one of those things that it's really hard to be. Um, you know, there's a few people who I, and if they're really good actors, I go, fucking more power to them, good on them. I love to see them succeed and, you know, people coming up. But when you see people who just, who are sort of mediocre and they're kicking big goals and because, you know, they're in the clique or they know someone or whatever, then it's kind of, you know, I think it's okay to take a pot shot at them. Mm. You know, good. like that Negan guy, I was sort of Googling him and looked at him, you know, after I missed, I found out he got the role. I was saying, like, why, why did he get that role? You know, and I was looking at him and there was nothing really compelling to sort of say why he got it other than he had a few runs on the board in America. And I found, I mean, that's the way it works. In America, you'll get, you know, you will get, um, and he's probably a lovely guy. I shouldn't be, you know, bagging him out because he's probably <laughs> a sweetheart, you know. But the reality is, I, 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 um, I think, you know, in America, when you get a role, um, if you if you get if you've got a lot of you know a good track record and and you'll get the role over someone who they don't know and in America I'm not really well known like I'm nobody knows me really in America and, you know maybe a few people but I'm not I'm not um, like if you mention Jeffrey Dean Morgan in the states all the casting directors and all the executives will know who we're talking about if you say Steve Bastoni in the states they'll go who you know so with the exception of a couple of people but yeah. Is there- is there any other roles that you were offered that, like, you regret uh, uh, not getting or turning down? The big one, I'd say, isn't it? Yeah, that is. Yeah. Well, look, you know, the, the, the lead role in Strictly Ballroom, I remember that came um, in that Baz Luhrmann film, Strictly Ballroom. <laughs> that I read the script um, and they asked me to read the script in the early days uh, before before it got cast, and I um, I read like ten pages of it. And thought, what a piece of shit this is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, it wasn't a great script. It was a terrible script, in fact. But you know, what they did with it visually and stuff was beautiful. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh Jesus, ninety-three percent, man. Yeah. It's... I've ne- I've never seen it now, but it seems to be getting yeah, good reviews. Like, from what I can see, uh, it, it got. I think it was. Um, it made a lot of noise. It's what launched Baz Luhrmann's career, and um, uh, Paul Mercurio, the guy who played the lead, was a great dancer, but a, not a very good actor. So, mm. um, yeah, he didn't. He should have sort of gone on to be a superstar after that role, but he. I, th- I think he got over to America and did a couple of auditions, and they went, eh. um, <laughs> yeah. There's only so much you can do, uh, you know, dancing. so much dancing you can. Dancing will only get you so far in Hollywood. Mm. <laughs> Clearly it didn't work for you then, man. Sorry about that. No. So <laughs> uh, <Phil>, man. <laughs> no, but uh, you, you're you also a, a director a writer, and a writer and a producer as well, aren't you? Yeah, I've, I've written, well... I don't know. Look, I, I'm a, primarily I'm an actor. I'm a storyteller. And I think that actors are storytellers naturally and writers are storytellers and directors are storytellers. So, you know, I think it's a, it's kind of natural to cross over into other disciplines. But, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a film director and I wouldn't call myself... I've produced and I've directed and made a couple of little shorts and that have gone on to win some awards and stuff and I'm proud of those things. But 
I've, you know, a director is someone who who studies the craft and knows how to make a film from scratch, sort of thing. You know, and I don't know how to do that stuff. I know what I'm looking for, you know, to get a performance and where I want the camera and stuff. So, you know, I'm not putting myself down or anything, but I wouldn't call myself a, you know, fully fledged director. I'm an actor who's dabbled with, dabbled with stuff and and had some success with that stuff. And and I enjoy it. I, I enjoy storytelling in all its forms. I like writing and. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've done all that stuff and, you know, created a couple of, uh, short film festivals. I run, uh, two, two film festivals, one in Victoria on the Mornington Peninsula and one up in Broken Hill. And, um, they're, they're quite large and going well and I'm in the process of doing another one. So, yeah. Do you spare play? Just no, that's yeah. pretty good. Awesome. How is Korea? Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually I'm reading I'm reading your IMDB right now. You oh, okay. have done some amazing things. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you did a uh, crocodile hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so crocodile. cool. Yeah, that was that was pretty fun. I, I actually didn't unfortunately didn't get to meet Steve Irwin. Oh, <laughs> I am. Um, that's a shame. God, all my stuff. Soul. Yeah, I mean, from he was a good friend of. Russell's actually, and uh, he's apparently an, was an amazing bloke, a uh, really lovely bloke. But I didn't get, unfortunately, didn't get to meet him because um, all my scenes were um, <coughs> in Brisbane. Uh, his stuff was all on location, and so he did. <coughs> my stuff was all. I played the the head of the CIA, um, and uh, sort of bad bad guy head of the CIA. <laughs> in that film, and um, yeah, it was a bit of fun. Always a CIA in Australia. <laughs> no, the CIA was tracking. Uh, they were tracking some. It was kind of a pretty far fetched plot, actually. Some surveillance, <laughs> a surveillance, surveillance device from the CIA sort of go drops out of the atmosphere and into the Australian desert, <clears throat> and um, the CIA, it contains sensitive information and they send out a couple of agents to find it and they come across Steve Irwin. <laughs> and some <laughs> some <laughs> make headphones use. Yeah. Sounds like a great movie. Yeah. It, it really does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also saw, um, I was researching earlier and I saw that uh, you were in an anti drugs campaign. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. That was um, yeah. That was. Oh, that was a. I was doing Rocky Horror Show in '87 at the time, and um, '87. We that's when I met Russell Crowe. He played Eddie and Doctor Scott in that production, um, and the other guy in it was an actor called Robert Mamone, and the girl in it is Antonia Kidman, who's Nicole Kidman's sister. Oh, wow. um, and yeah, that was a that was an anti drugs campaign, which was pretty pretty funny. It was just a little ad. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it was uh, just a little commercial I did. That's why I had blonde hair when I did that because um, <coughs> it was called. Um, oh. You have to be a bit more specific, Thomas. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. know, I'm trying to think of how to. Uh, how did I, I found it earlier? I found it earlier on now. I'm trying to think how that, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you look like surfer, bro. Well, I had the I had the blonde bleach blonde hair because I was playing Rocky Horror Show, and um, I think I just walked out of a nightclub then as well. I was pretty crazy when I was in my 20s. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, sure, yeah. I, I must say the acting is top notch in that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of fun, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, what, well, I think the punchline was the, the the girl said, "Yeah, sure, he's good looking, but would you? Is he will? Is he good enough to die for?" Or something? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. She says, hey, "He's good looking, but is it?" Is he is it is he good enough to die? Oh, I can't remember what she says. Yeah, but is he worth worth dying for? Worth dying for? Yeah, that's mm. your no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, they don't write them like that anymore. Oh God, no. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. No, those those these anti-drug campaigns are like the best. 
just anything to come out of here is is just incredible. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you a question, and then Dara completely threw me off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, what made you? Oh, how do I phrase it? Uh, what made you want to be an actor? Um, well, I kind of fell into it because uh, lack of other career opportunities, I think. <laughs> um, you're, the, you're like the fifth person to say that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was at high school and uh, it wasn't a particularly good school. Uh, most of my peers were either in jail or in, uh, you know, some fucking dead. And... Um, <laughs> And I just thought, well, what do I want to do? Uh, this this director came to my school and asked me to audition for a short film, and I said yes. And uh, and then at the screening of that short film, I met an agent, and they asked me to, you know, if they wanted, if I wanted representation, and I said, I don't know what that is, but it sounds great. Um, <laughs> and and so yeah, I just started working from there. Really, started working in television and kept getting work and uh, kept bluffing my way through. Uh, one of my first gigs was Prisoner Cell Block H, you know, that, that Prisoner, which is the it was rebooted now as a very popular show called Wentworth. Um, but Prisoner Cell Block H, if you Google uh, Peter McCormick, in um, Peter McCormick Prisoner Cell Block H, if you... Yeah, that, that'll do. It should come up. That's me when I was uh, 17 or something. Yeah, there you go. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Just a wee lad. Yeah, I was a little pimply little pot smoking kid. <laughs> <laughs> Who then dead. went and did an anti-drug commercial? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I did quite a bit of research in that area, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't okay. partake anymore. Please tell us about it. Now it's now it's surfing and basketball shoes. I'm addicted to basketball <laughs> shoes. Yeah, much healthier. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, no DMT like Joe Rogan. No, no, I, I've done that. I've, I've done all of that stuff, but yeah, no, it's not not for me these days. I, I've um, I've sort of been clean for about twelve years, so straight edge. Oh. Before then, before then, I gave it a pretty good nudge, and that's how I became an actor. <laughs> and, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I wanted to get laid and have fun and you know party. And so acting seemed like a really good career choice for a young, you know. So it was like a young man, yeah, lad. A young crazy kid who wants to get laid and have and party, you know, acting. Yeah, bring it on. Get paid for <laughs> get paid for pretending to be someone else, and then uh, the rest of the time go out and party. That that does sound like a very good lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, that sounds alright. Jeez, it no, sounds good. Into that area. It gets it gets old pretty quick, but you know, um, it, it it was fun for you know probably the first ten years, and then after that it was kind of a bit hard work. Uh, yeah. But I suppose you know, it's it's uh, most people would say, how can you fucking say that? That's like my dream life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. I um. So you're also an ambassador for uh, Are You Okay? Is that uh, it's like a is it a mental health? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, yeah. Um, I lost a few couple of friends to suicide, and um, you know, mainly one of them was sort of uh, probably you know quite drug related. Um, you know, he was struggling with um, his demons and medicating himself quite heavily and regularly, mm -hmm. and uh, and he just lost himself and ended up taking his own life. So. You know, when I was I was doing Neighbours and I got asked if I would help out with a campaign for a, a program called Lifeline, which is a, basically a, a crisis crisis phone line. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll help you guys out with that. And I did a few videos for them. And then, um, uh, then my mate, who was the CEO of Lifeline or managing director of Lifeline, went on to 
come become the CEO of Are You OK? and asked if I would help out with Are You OK? So I've, I've been a, an ambassador for them ever since and, and done done some some work with them and yeah I really enjoy that stuff it's good I find it very satisfying it's incredible work that you're doing oh it's good mate you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of people suffer from mental health and and don't reach out man. there's a lot of people yeah. particularly in, in regional towns where the isolation they're very isolated and um, and they don't talk and particularly men Australian men and probably Irish blokes would probably be the same we're not really encouraged to talk about our feelings too much. You know, I've never fucking sat in a pub and gone, so, mate, tell me how you're feeling, you know. Most mm-hmm. people, you know, that just doesn't happen, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But guys, particularly Aussie men, they, they've got that real macho sort of um, vibe going. And, um, you know, that that's, uh, they live by the ethos, uh, suck it up, princess, uh, drink a cup of concrete and toughen the fuck up, you know. And, and that does It's not really- far off that as well. Yeah, and it doesn't. That's not really helpful for people who are struggling mentally, you know. So, yeah. And which fuck these days, you know, most people are. <laughs> you know, yeah. a lot what of people thing? are struggling. Like I can tell that you know you three are pretty much uh, on the verge of some kind of breakdown. Um, <laughs> yeah, we started a podcast. It hasn't already Come happened. <laughs> <laughs> you start, that's your self help group, is it? Fucking yeah. daily, man. This is worse. This is fucking oh, worse. Oh yeah, man. This worsens my mental state. I come back here and have to fucking talk to these guys all day. Yeah. This is actually our second podcast today. Yeah, is it? It's like an yeah. hour, hour before every episode. It's just fucking Chaos. multiple takes, multiple <laughs> takes of like trying to the... read something, and then they'll be like fucking screaming down the mic, or being like, "Oh, we're not I that can't bad. Do this. We stop. <laughs> we're not in all fairness. We're that bad, dude. Come on, man." <laughs> You're coming live from the padded cell. <laughs> <laughs> Not far off at this point. <laughs> but uh, no, w- one thing we love about the podcast is we get to meet all these interesting people. Yeah, uh, that's great. People we've seen yeah. in shows, people we've seen in movies. Yeah. Uh, like yourself. Like yeah, you've been cool. a crazy about the crazy amount of things. We've probably seen nearly all of them. Well, uh, so what did, you, what did you know me from? The Matrix. Uh, Matrix. Matrix, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, right. Matrix and then delved into it more and I was like, oh, I know that. Yeah, oh, I feel I like everyone well. knows Neighbours. It doesn't even matter if you're Australian or not. Obviously, it's bigger no, than that, that well, yeah. Everybody knows Neighbours. It's funny because Neighbours, we used to do this thing. At, there was a pub in St Kilda called the Elephant and Wheelbarrow. And every Monday night, we would do these appearances where we just rock up and there'd be a shitload of Northern English, uh, Northern English and Irish people, a lot of Irish <laughs> people who were just crazy about neighbors and they knew, you know, all the characters and, you know, they'd come and, and, uh, they were fair drinkers too. And, um, we are, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and we'd have, to, you know, we'd basically go there and, and sign autographs and have photos taken with them for about an hour and a half or two hours and, and then, and get a nice water cash, which is pretty cool. There's two yeah. two Australian programs. It's Neighbours and Home and Away. Yeah, and yeah. like Massive you hear of one or the other. It's like, mm. yeah, you know, yeah, to, well, to to most Irish people, they'd probably be like, "Oh, Neighbours or Home and Away, best thing to come out of Australia," which yeah. isn't true because the best thing to come out of Australia is the Bunnings sausage. Fucking <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, you know they were they're really long running shows, which um, you know it's been. And a lot of people have, um, you know, they've started their careers there and gone on to have uh, careers in you know that that have gone on for like some of those guys have been there for fucking thirty years. You know. Yeah. Um, nice. um, you know, it was very uh, creatively. It was a bit challenging because you know you've got to shoot very quickly and. Um, the scripts come thick and fast, and and they don't always make sense. <laughs> so, you know, but but that, that didn't never stop the success of the show. So yeah. that's the it's thing with so soaps, gone. though. Soaps, soaps, they always have to have, you know, some something going on between some characters, you know, and and yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's a lot of a kind of reoccurring. Most of the time, it's, it's che- cheating on people, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Or someone, someone dying, or someone gets killed, and someone, then they have to hide someone, it up. Or murder mystery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's always something going yeah. on, you know. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of a soap ending in my lifetime from like when I was born to now. Or at least yeah. ending on their own terms. Yeah. Of starting of of starting within my lifetime and ending within my lifetime, they're always going way, way back. Yeah. yeah. They like, just keep doing. Fair City is when it goes in Ireland and that's that's been around forever. Yeah. Like you got over here you got like Fair City and the East Enders and How long has that been yeah. running, Thomas? Fair City. Uh nineteen eighty nine. Jesus oh, Christ. I, I got to be in that before lockdown. It was my last gig before lockdown. Oh yeah. yeah. So you, Not guys, a bad one. you guys are filmmakers or actors? Um, I've been in a lot of musical theatre stuff. I've played Jared, a lot of Jared roles. Likes to think he's a huge time actor. I know. Sure. No, <laughs> no um, I've been an extra and I've been an actor. Yeah, it's fun. Me it's and fun. Dara were uh, Captain Hook and Smithy. Yeah, and oh, it's yeah. me. It's me, not Smithy. It's me in uh, Peter Pan. Thomas really shows dedication <laughs> to your fucking art form when you don't even know the name of the guy. <laughs> Fair play, man. Fucking <laughs> idiot. I know, um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, my, my last question for you, let you go on with your day, um, would be any advice to someone starting as an actor? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would do as much theatre as you can and read as many scripts as you can. And, uh, you know, grab a camera, make some short films, you know, grab a ca- grab some mates, um, grab a camera and just write a couple of short films. Um, you know, if you can enter a few festivals globally and do that, you, can, you know, if you win any prizes, it just it gives you a little bit of... Because the, one of the difficulties with acting, it's not like if you're a muso, you can just grab your guitar and go down to the local fucking shops and put a hat out and start playing, you know. Or if you're a painter, you just pick up your brushes and start brushing. But as an actor, uh, you're always kind of waiting for somebody else to to um, to be creative. You know, you need a you need a project. You need a, you know you need to be cast in that project. And uh, and so there's a lot of actors just sit around waiting for the phone to ring. And waiting for opportunity to knock on their door, whereas I think you have to create your own opportunities these days, and and you know get out there and have a crack yourself, and you know get a bunch of people together, come up with a, an idea, write the script, uh, find the locations, get a mate with a camera, find out someone who can edit, and off you go, you know. Yeah. So uh, just do it exactly. <laughs> and, <Yes>. and, you <laughs> know, Thomas, it, of I, all the things that we couldn't show, uh, it's probably one of them. <laughs> uh, like you literally did the same thing earlier, except you put just don't do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you've got to be proactive and create your own opportunities, you know, and and try and because um, it's it's a very competitive field. But if you you know if you create something that resonates with people and. Um, you know, you can get a bit of an audience online. You can, you know, through YouTube or whatever, um, and get a few eyeballs on it. It can start to um, generate some interest. You know, yeah. Like a lot of web series have, have gone on to be bought now. You know, like a lot of big streamer companies, uh, they're buying web yeah. content. So we had some of the guys from the first YouTube web series to become a movie. Yeah, uh, the Hardy and, Books. Uh, they were on. Yeah. Some brilliant guys. Yeah, and and the Start. thing is that it gives you it gives you a chance to practice what you do as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they they, start, they started off with just just I am <laughs> with it. They started off with a camera <laughs> and a few lads, and they went out and uh, made a short film, and it went viral from there. Yeah. So with the internet, yeah. you know, it, it kind of helps. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot more you know, opportunities to broadcast and have a platform these days. But, you know, look, it's not easy. There's so much content out there. So, you know, to actually cut through all the noise and make an impact, it, it's, you know, you have to do something pretty special and market it well and all of that stuff. Yeah. But, but it's doable, you know. It's And, and the best thing about it is that you, regardless of whether it does anything or not, you get the experience of working on it and you get to become a better actor or a better producer or director or whatever it is you want to do, you know. Yeah. 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 No, we we really appreciate that. No worries, guys. Well, it's been good chatting, and um, it's been it's been an honor for us. 
Oh, thank you so much for getting on. No, no worries. Thank you, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks very much. You too, gentlemen. Same goes. You got a bed. (laughs) Yeah, we got to go to bed now. (laughs) Second podcast of the day. We're going mental. Um, So thanks to anyone who uh, watched. Uh, Like, comment, subscribe. Tell your grandma about the podcast. And, uh, you know, have a great day. Cheers, guys. Thanks. See ya.